the more and more that I start to watch One Piece, the more that I realize that I'm starting to like the show a lot compared to my go-to and my favorite anime of all times, Naruto Shippuden. And when I see these characters in One Piece, i like, dang, can these characters compete with Naruto characters? And today, that's what I'm going to find out. Why Hokage versus Admirals isn't close. So, I can say so far that there was two, actually there's three Kage, in my opinion, that can compete with the Admirals. Hashirama, Naruto, and Kakashi. Everybody else, they can get mopped. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that. But I better not see Hashirama lose, Kakashi lose, and definitely Naruto. Naruto should not even lose anybody. But uh, check it out. Admirals and Kage, they are surprisingly they very similar, with both being reputations for characters that are considered to be top tier in their own respective verse. Okay. Usually, when someone is strong in the series, arguments would be made whether or not they are admiral level or Kage level. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, Instead yeah, of yeah, arguing about maybe who's Kage or admiral level, let's talk about who actually wins between the two groups. Specifically, okay. we'll be going over the Hokage against the four main admirals that we know. We know obviously there are five admirals but like one of them don't really do much wait so, so how is he doing this get rid of green bull just like all the admirals and like kage like fighting each other and be using fujitora and i'm not alone as i have my buddy broken ronin here what's up guys uh for this video we'll be using the four uh initial hokage of the leaf village being hashirama Tobi, oh losing and the first and four Minato. okay and for the admirals we'll be using akainu aokiji kizaru and fujitora if okay. you guys want more One Piece versus Naruto related content, please leave below down in the comments. What Wait, do you should be more specific, not just why Hokage versus Admirals. Why not all the Hokage? I don't get that. Or all the Admirals. I don't know if this is all the Admirals or not. I, I generally don't know. Uh, But yeah. You'd like to see from us in the near future. Firstly, it should be noted that besides Fujitora, who is clearly weaker than all the other admirals, the rest of the admirals should be pretty relative with each other. This uh -huh. is given the fact that in Marineford, the admirals were all getting feats off on Marineford Whitebeard. Whitebeard is weakened by this point, however, even at Marineford, he's still stated he's so to be plantary. the world's strongest pirate, yeah. and is capable of shifting fucking tectonic plates, which Aokiji is completely unaffected by and negates the attack with his ice. And obviously, Akainu, who's going to be leading the admirals into battle, beat up Aokiji himself, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I, I, I'm really thinking about it. This bit Hashirama clears by himself. Like, I'm not being biased, right? I'm not being biased. What are they gonna do against the thousand arm cannon Buddha? What are they gonna do? Nothing, right? Let's just say they happen to do something about it. They can get sealed by the deity gates. They can get uh reverse sealed, right? They can get uh blown up, right? Because they can so get touched. No, you don't think just because they have their Logia that they can't get touched. They can definitely get touched. But I don't see him being Hashirama. The the Everybody else, I'm fine As with. As for Kizaru, we've seen Kizaru being There's capable of piercing Whitebeard and even blitzing him. And we know as well the Admirals are all holding back since they're not trying to destroy the island. Making yeah. them comfortably in the multi-continental range. And if you think this is somewhat inconsistent, well no, it's that's not fair. as weaker characters such as Chin Zhao is capable of splitting continents with his horn. And mind you, this is in one piece where the planet is literally dwarf star level in size. So breaking a continent and shifting tectonic plates is actually way more impressive than you think it is and as for speed well they all scaled a whitebeard who i specifically scaled in my whitebeard versus madara video i use the 3d2y whitebeard scaling to say he's madara at mftl speeds but a lot of people dislike it so i'll just go with something that's well established it's not weird to have characters at ftl uh I, most animes characters are ftl or like light speed in general that's not like that's pretty normal the manga and upscales them to higher speeds than what i presented before to keep it brief, Whitebeard and the other Admiral should be way above Sao Bodhi Zoro, who can react to the Pacifista lasers at 18 times the speed of light. We know okay. that bare minimum hockey should be a 150 times multiplier, which I actually elaborated on in my Luffy scale, but I'll just go over anyway. We know that in Amazon Lily, they use hockey enhanced arrows that can harm Luffy and destroy walls in comparison to normal arrows, which should just break from the sheer impact of that or barely destroy wood. And if you do the quick maths and use the base multiplier, we have a 150 times but we'll just go with the 150 times multiplier and bare minimum all the admirals should be capable of combating at over 2700 times the speed of light also for food wait hold up hold up i i, I feel like i'm missing something because how do you casually just say that okay be capable of combating at over 2000
Wait, I gotta go back. Where's the 18 coming from? Uh. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Them numbers pull stretch a crack. What, bro? Okay. This multiplier, we have a 150 times, but we'll just go with the 150 times multiplier. And bare minimum, all the admirals should be capable of combating at over 2,700 times the speed of light. Also, for Fujitora, I'll just say that his okay. scaling should be ranging around the large country to continental range. And the reason why I'm putting him so much lower than the other admirals is because he simply just lacks the feats to compare to the others. Saying that all admirals are relative, I think, is a little weird, and I think there's at least a baseline requirement for admirals. Admiral, but I don't yeah, think yeah, because yeah. you're an admiral, you should be equivalent to other admirals. I'm not knowing where that 18 came from. Admirals though, I'm not gonna lie. Show way more impressive feats. However, he's still pretty strong in his own right, being low continental at best, and still gets the MFTL scaling, so that's all good. Now, besides the raw stats, I think it should be noted how useful their hacks could be when working together. Aokiji just has crazy range and can flash freeze the entire battlefield, or maybe even a Kainu who can just melt everything in his path, stated by the data book. And we yeah. have Kizaru who shoots MFTL speed attacks. And the AoE that it could range from is kind of crazy because it can even consume large battleships. Mm -hmm. But it can also range from just, you know, shooting a little chicken nugget laser like how he was doing. Chicken with Marco. nugget lasers. And let's not get started with Fujitora's ability, who arguably probably has the best hacks amongst the admirals. That being being able to control gravity and summon large country level fucking meteors from the sky. Yeah, the admirals That's are definitely going to be a pretty hard I mean, challenge for the can do that, but that is to closed. overcome. <laughs> now, when scaling the Hokage, I think okay. the easiest thing to go over is their speed, considering that, more or less, when it comes to Naruto, you can cap them out at a certain level of speed and kind of just argue a little bit minute differences here or there. Um, basically, they cap out about FTO to FTO+, plus, excluding Minato, who has a little bit better scaling that I'll get into this in a little like bit, quiet, all because of Naruto so. being able to dodge the Raikage, the Raikage being stated to move at, or at least near the speed of light. I this saw on TikTok, people keep, like, the, it's mainly One Piece fans, like, it, they go back and forth between One Piece and Naruto, but I always see that, they always say that, oh, this feat isn't light speed. Bro, it's literally stated that the Raikage is light speed. Like, I don't get that. Relatively like, bro, come on. Other Give them their credit. In the series be able to move at the speed of light, or at least shoot attacks that move at light speed, like Darui and Haku. Hashirama obviously scales at least to this base, like, premature KCM Naruto. Tobi Rama clearly scales. Minato is a speed demon that surpasses almost everybody else in the verse up to this point. And Haruzen also scales, as they all have feats that are relative to or even greater than the Naruto that, once again, perform this speed. Now, based off the calcs that I'm pretty sure will be provided, basically this gets Naruto characters, or specifically these Kage, to 77 times the speed of light, or a couple dozen. Bro, what? The time frame of Raikage's punch at 90% of the speed of light. Okay, bro, what are... How are they calculating the, the amount of distance that somebody's even traveling or moving? They're doing it by like pixels or like the frame or something? Because <laughs> like, how do you even pull these numbers in the first place? Bro, what? ...in times the speed of light. Um, as for Minato, he has a little bit better scaling as he's able to react to and even slightly move with characters like like six past sage mode modern eighth gate guy however because we don't really have very many calcs for how fast these characters are going and what speed he was able to react to them at we just know he's yo kishimoto what i can say is that he did a horrible job when it comes to like stating specifically how like fast or how strong a character is because he just like because the naruto community or naruto in general there's not like blatant like facts or feats to how strong a certain character is for example, like, I think the only one that we have is Curse Mark, and that's a 10 times multiplier. That's just about it, I think. It's just... <laughs> because, like, even when it comes to, like, number of tails you have, it's not, like, a blatant number, like, how strong you are. It's just, you know, how much chakra we think you have from a tail. Like, a blatant number is not a thing, but in One Piece, they actually give you, like, numbers and stuff like that.
between him and the rest of the Kage. It's Elvis very is not vague. very quantifiable, very at least in a, a numerical sense. When it comes to AP, the disparity starts to become a little bit more clear. Um, the strongest of the Kage is Hashirama, as yep. he has a pretty definitive planetary level scaling just based off of Kurama. For all those who aren't aware, half of Kurama is stated to be able to turn the world to ash, which at bare minimum is a multi-continental feat. However, due to it being consistent that Hashirama scales to these more planetary threats like the Ten Tails, it makes much uh -huh. more sense to say that he is planetary in terms of his strength rather than multi-continental. Tobirama probably scales if we're going also. off of AP around that country level, just because he scales a little bit higher than Orochimaru, Orochimaru being stated in part one of Naruto to be able to destroy a small country. As for Haruzen, he scales pretty similar. You can get him pretty high if you just argue like- Bro, here's a trash, I'm not gonna lie. I will never wank Hiruzen well, and pause. On just saying. Think that to be true, one one character I did not like in Naruto was always Hiruzen. I never liked him. Like some people cared about him, Oh, and Jiraiya, I didn't really care for Jiraiya either. That's a crazy take. But I, I just didn't. It was just like, eh, it's whatever. Whenever he died, I'm like, okay. You know, it, it didn't really bother me. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, that's another, another old head packed. <laughs> First Hiruzen, then Jiraiya. Out the window. And from anywhere from country level to being relative to Orochimaru to planetary, although country is a much more safe bet. As for Minato, you can also get him to that continental to country level if you argue that he's he shows relativity to half of Kurama, him being able to teleport his Biju bombs and even able to seal the entirety of Kurama and split it between him and Naruto. However, the consistent scaling for the general level of Okage is FTO plus and continental to planetary. Yeah. With that being said, we can go over some of their hacks, which honestly, in comparison to the One Piece character Bro, and their Admiral, second Hokage is actually trash. Um, Hashirama has wood style and insane regen, which would be pretty useful in a long term fight against someone that is relative to him in strength. However, outside of that, he can absorb chakra and I guess the energy source of whoever he's fighting. Um, but his wood style is just basically very straightforward. Tobirama and Minato have Flying Raijin, which is pretty broken. However, if they can't react to the people they are fighting against, it's not really that useful. And Haruzen honestly has the best hacks as he, he's basically stated to know every jutsu in the Leaf Village, uh -huh. which is impressive. However, most Leaf Village jutsu are just like fire style. Yeah, I would say it's not really much. That insane when yeah. talking about a cross first versus battle. Jesus Christ. Why is that now so loud? Now we can get into some <laughs> interactions, which honestly might be the best part of the video. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously, because they're fighting each other, but I think narratively and the implications that the fight would have, I think would be pretty cool. For starters, we have Hashirama versus Akainu, and this match is probably the closest, except for one other one that I'll mention later. It's the strongest, and the up? leader of the Admirals versus the strongest, and basically the founding father of the Hokage. I thought it was going to be like a, like a 3v4 not like individual like one-on-one -on -one matchups and bro he put the super effective one against the least very effective what is this they put magma against wood what kind of i think it's kind of crazy because these bias. two are basically the top dogs of the reverse <laughs> but their what personalities are completely opposite bro. hashirama is a really nice guy you know like he is there for the people and provides for the what people the? i knew it he doesn't give a fuck about anybody like he he really doesn't care and it's also kind of crazy because you know hashirama has wood and stuff and akainu is a fucking volcano hashirama is looking like a grass type and it, you know, that's what i'm saying it's not looking good right now now i will say that it does look like hashirama does have better ap because there is the karama scaling and obviously he scales above madara who scales to karama however i do want to note that you could very much so get akainu to planet level though i no Okay, so here, 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 okay, wait, what was I he going to say? I think it is fallacious to say, and it's, you know, if you just try to say, oh, well, he skills to Whitebeard, who can destroy the planet with his devil fruit, even though we clearly okay. know the implication. Okay, so he knows that that's just Hex, okay. I was about to be like, no, bro, what is this? Because right. of that, and we know that this is hacks and not AP, really. Right. Not thank like White you, thank you, punch the planet and then boom. No, he makes an entire earthquake that can affect the entire world and crumple it. However, I do think that he is well into multi-continental, especially because even people like Hizaru were down to take on Big Mom and Kaido, and we know that Kaido can cause natural disasters. And obviously, we have the continental Chin Jiao scaling and Aokiji negating attacks that shift entire tectonic plates and Aokiji versus. Verbatim lost to Akainu. 
Now this is sort of a one piece thing, Ronin. In one piece, there are Logia double fruit users, which basically mean they can't get hit by anything. Oh, and they can basically that, like not... morph into that element and basically just move around to a point. If he gets turned to lava, and he decides to drop an explosive jutsu on him, he's going to get affected by that. Like, what, what, what is this? And also, the wood is not just normal wood. It's chakra wood. It's not just like some kind of plant you get from outside and like, bam, I'm going to slap you with this. No. It's chakra enhanced amped wood. It's not normal wood. Point to where you so it's get still hit. Katakuri though. does this with Luffy, despite Luffy having hockey, because hockey allows users to bypass the fact that they can hit Logia users, right? However, if you just move so much faster than your opponent, you literally just can't touch them regardless. And obviously, due to this being a versus battle, we're equalizing energy stuff, so they can hit the Logia users. However, Akainu is just so much faster than Hashirama, he could literally just morph his body around so that Hashirama can't even hit him. And like how I said earlier, bro, if he drops, um, let's just say, like I said before, the thousand arm cannon, that whole entire area is going to be blown up and he will still get affected whether he's fast or not. He is going to get blown up. That's the thing. He's going to get vaporized by that ajutsu. So what that, that, okay, hold up. Let's just, uh, let's just say there's a, there's a wild tailed beast on the loose and he kind of sees it. He's like, oh, he can't hit me because he looks slower than me. He gets tail beast bombed. He's going to get affected and hit by that. So whether you are low or not, you're going to get affected. Like you could turn to magma and get vaporized. Like, ooh, that, <laughs> what? Earlier, a kind of can turn into literal magma and him. just negate Hashirama's durability. And if you don't think that's good enough, there's the fact that Kizaru, Aokiji, and Akainu use advanced armament to negate Whitebeard's duranegging attack, which implies that they also have the ability to duraneg. While it is unfortunate for Hashirama, even though he the has entire a surface pretty definitive area. strength advantage, him. because of generally One Piece characters' abilities, or at least some One Piece characters' abilities to dura negate their opponents, the massive and massive speed difference between the two would allow for Hashirama to be pretty easily taken down. Now, moving on to the second matchup. One thing also, what I can't say, is that their fighting strategies are completely different. Hashirama is a big brain man he would probably shadow clone and if he gets hit just substitute and he learned from his mistakes to not let that happen again and like i said not like i said he also has a massive chocolate pool and he could fight for days so he could right he could plan everything out with his shadow clones i mean his wood clones right and you can't tell the difference between the two either because even moderate can't do that actually i think you can but it's only moderate because the moderate follow for like over and over again and you can't tell the difference between these two. And if you catch them off guard, bam, donezo. I will, I will die on this hill. Toby the rest can win. I don't really care. And Toby Rama's trash. Ice versus water matchup is a relatively interesting <laughs> one. However, like it's going to go in a Bro's similar racist. fashion, if not even worse, to how Hashirama turned out. Now, Toby Rama is not only, I'm pretty sure, weaker <laughs> than Aokiji in terms of AP. No, he is. But he's also slower, right? A and considering that Toby Rama's most of his abilities are based off of his speed, uh -huh. quickness, and intelligence, if he's not able to implement any of those things in the battle, he pretty much gets washed <laughs> or frozen, I guess, in this instance, by Aokiji. Yeah. And honestly, this is probably the matchup that has the like worst outcome. It's just the most blatant because he he doesn't skill in AP and he doesn't skill in speed whatsoever. And I think it would be kind of funny. Like imagine Toby Rama trying to do the fucking tandem paper bomb technique, right? Just for Aokiji to freeze the entire dome and just yeah, like, that wouldn't know. Aokiji got <laughs> like that. Toby Rama's yeah. one strong jutsu that actually has some decent AP it just gets nagged. Now the next matchup is Fujitora versus Haruzen, which I think thematically is pretty fitting since both of them in their respective verses are basically the ride or die and will do anything to prove what's right. I mean, yeah. we see Haruzen coming to terms There's and sacrificing well. himself against his own <laughs> student in comparison to someone like Fujitora who stood up to Suzuki despite knowing that he can definitely just be crumpled instantly and could be fired from the Navy. And, and like also, he forgot about Sage Mode. So Sage Mode, he can also have, he it grants him Precog as well, which gives him an advantage. I'm just saying, I think, 
Hachirama stomps out Akainu. And if not stomp out, it's really close. How I said earlier, I just there don't was see another Akainu, matchup that uh, I found Wolverine pretty relative. Winning. Yeah, Fujitora versus Haruzen is that matchup, with both characters being well into the large country range. However, Fujitora does have the big speed advantage here. And I think Haruzen's hacks, you know, it's nothing to slouch at, but I don't think clones, water, and fire, and air, and like earth, are going to do anything when he's literally forced to be restrained to the ground against his own will while a yeah. meteor from the sky comes down atomizing this man and it's also worth noting that every single fight fujitora participates yeah in, yeah, yeah. i like that word i saw let's process that in my head atomizing a is getting atomized by hashirama senju within the instant instantaneous atomization I like that. That's a perfect word. Back, and we see him not really having any bad stamina problems, but Haruzen is notorious for having shit stamina. So even if they're <laughs> relative in AP, no, and let's just say for the sake of argument, they were relative in speed, Haruzen probably just wears himself out, and Fujitora's range is simply too much for Haruzen. Yeah. So for the fourth and final matchup of today's video, we're going to be going over... Minato versus Kizaru, two of the speed demons. Kizaru ones, I'm not gonna lie. Minato being the yellow flash. I'm not gonna lie, Kizaru ones. Yellow monkey. And for yellow both monkey. of the respective feats, um, in terms of AP, once again, we have them being relative. And, and this makes you probably think, you know, Minato might have a chance, right? You know, Minato has like instantaneous teleportation that like surpasses space and time. And, uh, you know, he's relative in AP. However, how this matchup has been going. Oh, oh shout out to the fresh and clean. The fresh and clean clean stuff. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Comparison to Kizaru, <clears throat> like Ty said earlier in the video, has massively faster than light feats. And what essentially speed blitz just wear Minato down even if for some reason you argued Dura Negation didn't work on Minato or for some reason it just wasn't applicable he would simply just wear him down with oh really yeah wait hold up this is another factor right hear me out if Hashirama gets a hole punch in them then Akainu takes his arm out right bam insta heal back because Hashirama is him his self healing without doing any hand size is stronger than the uh the Byakuyo seals I was called I forgot uh the thousand healing jutsu it's stronger than that without doing nothing so i mean you can't really fatally kill him unless you take his head off so i mean you know uh, i'm sure i got that in the bag easy <laughs> millions of attacks before we will be able to land one kind of in the, the deal for this fight Another good thing to note as well is that Minato does have some decent range. You know, Flying Raijin, it does close the distance on opponents. However, when I'm approaching so someone like Kizaru, what's going to happen is they're both going to be probably just trying to clash with each other, right? And Kizaru just sees Minato clearly being inferior. And he could just simply go up into the sky and spam those light bullets like what he did with Marco. And those light bullets, mind you, are going to be capable of harming Minato. And Kizaru could just spam it infinitely if he wanted to. Well, obviously Infinite. not infinitely, but for a long well, time about because, to say. you know, it's just light it's something that he can manipulate it doesn't really require energy for him to do that like kizaru could straight up shoot a laser and might just nuke the entire battlefield and beat everyone up that isn't named hashirama and unfortunately this is how most of the admirals versus hokage would go i mean just put a kainu by himself you know what? let's just keep let, let's just put a kainu by himself Bro, he literally are, turns into a volcano king. what happens he gets turned to volcano. What happens? Let me answer this for you. They can do the four pound pound ugh, the four formation. I don't know what it's called, but they put up like the the huge like eight not eight but the huge four walls. And it can contain the nine the ten tails actually. So I mean, if he turns to volcano, they're just gonna seal him off. I mean, like what what's he gonna do? Nothing. Or that's even a bigger target for Hashirama. To blow him up, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, what is that supposed to do? And if it comes to it, I don't think it teleport a volcano away. I'm not gonna lie, but they could reverse summon and end up somewhere else so they don't get affected by it. So, yeah. What do they do? Yeah. Or what's a uh, what's the thing called? Body flicker out the way. You guys probably forgot about body flicker, huh? super fast speeds that's what every single ninja can do so i'm just saying yeah that's that's basically the argument here and one piece versus naruto listen been a topic for a while and you know what it might have been a bigger topic <sighs> if i wasn't around bro you're cringe because the admirals stomp on the kage that's cringe and if you disagree join the discord i disagree i'm not doing that trash this word and subscribe to ronin <laughs> i'm actually hating okay. and that's it merry christmas everyone well merry christmas when does it come out oh anyways um 
that's that. Let me guys know your uh, opinions down below. I thought it was going to be like a, a, a 4v4, 3v4, whatever, whatever they said. But it was just like a 1v1s. Like uh, I agree with most of the stuff that you said, actually. But I do think Hashirama beats Akainu. And that's just about that. And uh, I see you guys next one. Bye-bye.